So uh, here we here we are again. If you recall, last April I got this playbill because I went and saw Hamilton on Broadway with the original cast of New York City. If you don't already hate me, you'll hate me some more. This past week I got to go see Hamilton again, but this time in Chicago. Ooh, as you can tell, I stole a playbill, so now I have two playbills. Hamilton is the thing. If you want a specific play-by-play -play of the choreography of Hamilton, or basically as much as I can remember, you're gonna have to go watch my New York version. I'm sorry, I really don't remember that much this second time around, and I don't feel like talking for an hour about it. If you still haven't seen it and you're like, I want to know everything, go watch that video, because that video I'm very proud of. I am here today to review Chicago because Chicago was different than New York and I feel like I have a very specific viewpoint because I did see 90% of the original cast on Broadway. The only original cast member I did not see was Jonathan Groff. I had to see Rory O'Malley instead and he was amazing. And so I feel like I should share my two cents because I've seen both. I'm not gonna remember everything and if there's something that you remember from the Chicago thing that you're like, Jenna, remember this? I'll be like, yes, let me know in the comments. So if for some reason you don't wanna be spoiled, uh, you can leave and come watch it after you see the show or something like that. Hamilton, Chicago. Was it as good as New York City? No, but I think I should point out that's because the one in New York City is its own thing. Like it is brilliant but it's totally different if you see the original cast of something versus like the touring cast or the Chicago cast or whatever, like it's a different experience. I will say this is the first musical that I've ever seen twice and it's the only musical I've ever seen in two separate cities. So that is something that I think is huge because I've never done that before. So that's really important to me. Did I enjoy Chicago even though I saw it in New York? Absolutely, it was amazing. I would do it again in a heartbeat if somebody gave me tickets, like for sure, but it was different. It was different. So if you've seen it in New York and you go see it in Chicago, you're definitely going to notice that they're separate. They're different things. Um, and even more so if you've seen the original cast. I feel like if you see um, like the second or third Broadway cast or what's on right now in New York, like it's even going to be different from this, but it'll, it'll feel different than if like you saw the original cast, if you know what I mean. I don't know. Lots of things going through my head right now, so I'm sorry if I word vomit. So let's talk really quick about my favorite things about the Chicago version. The Chicago version is great because I knew one of the cast members and I didn't go backstage or anything. I didn't like really know him. We were more of acquaintances. I've actually taken his picture twice and that person is Chris Lee. Chris Lee played Lafayette and Jefferson um, the night that I went and saw it at least. He's the main, main guy and um, he ended up going to my school for about three years and then he went on to Broadway. It's fine. I'm fine. It's fine. Um, and so I had taken his picture a couple times and when I saw he got cast, me and all my friends were super excited because obviously it's cool when one of your own gets to do this. Like, what the heck? And that being said, he was like, he was definitely one of the highlights for me. Like, if you see it for anything, go see it for him because he is literally my age. He's like 21, 22 and he is on Broadway with like huge names of people who are way way older than him way way more experienced than him and yet he still was better than a lot of them in my opinion he did a really good job of keeping to the characters that David made in the original but also twisting it enough that you're like oh that's obviously not David like that's Chris making it his own so I was really really proud to see that because I feel like a lot of future Jeffersons are gonna get lost in David and who he is and how he made the character to be because it's like it's very specific you have to really become David I feel like to play that part and Chris did a great job of he was very expressive in his faces in his uh, movements he was really really good at turning the characters into him like it was him and I wasn't sitting there the whole time being like, but remember David, even though part of me was still like, but remember David. But I, I was so incredibly proud of him and his singing was so good. I love his singing. I love his voice very much. Um, his rapping was on point. I was really proud of his French accent, even though it was like probably not the best accent ever, but better than I could have done. So I was very happy with it. I, I swear I cheered the loudest anytime he was on stage because I was like, I gotta represent for my school, you know? So he was great. He was definitely a highlight. Another highlight that me and my friend Laura were talking about literally the day after, like still talking about it today is Aaron Burr, Joshua Henry. It's really sad because the night we saw it, they later announced that he is moving to San Francisco, which is fine. Like he gets to keep doing it and that's great. But like 
we were just so in love with him. If you get to see it with Joshua Henry, like, Lord Jesus. Like, don't get me wrong. Leslie Odom Jr. is amazing and he's the original. Like, I am so glad that I got to see him. But additionally, Joshua Henry really surprised me. Going into it, I didn't expect much of him, I think. I didn't expect much about all of them, which is really selfish of me. But, like, but Joshua Henry really blew me away. Like, I loved when Leslie did the room where it happens because, you know, but, like, <sighs> Hmm. Joshua Henry doing Room Where It Happens literally changed my life. Like, I feel like my skin is clear, the sky is opening up, like, hallelujah chorus is everywhere. It was the best thing ever. Also, the person who was playing the banjo that night was really on point for that song, so props to you. Joshua Henry was the other highlight of this show. It's Chris Lee and Joshua Henry who are just like, mm, mm, so good, so good. I love, love, loved him. Even from the opening number, he was just so phenomenal and he made it different enough that I really did not think that much about Leslie. I was more just like, can this guy sing some more? Because I am down right now. Let's do it. On the women's side, the highlight, Karen, our lovely Angelica. I love her so much. Again, you can't compare to the original because it's the original, but uh, if you don't know Karen, I think it's Olivo. I don't remember her last name, it starts with an O, but she was in In the Heights for the original Broadway cast, and so she is now playing Angelica in Chicago, and I was expecting big things from her because I know she had been on Broadway, and so I was like, all right, girl, like, you gotta do this. It's gonna be great, I'm sure. But literally, whew, Room Where It Happens was good, but also, in a similar fashion, Satisfied was, it blew me away. Like, she hits this high note for, for ours. I don't know if she did this, like, vocal thing for anything else, but... The night we went and saw it, she did this really great, like, vocal improv during the end of Satisfied, and she has that note, where you'll always be satisfied. It's like that part, the always goes up really high at the end, like, right before it's finished, and she just went for it. And she hit this note that, like, it probably wasn't even that high, but she belted it, and it was really high, and I was just like, yes, yes, yes. She put in so much emotion that I was just so proud of her work, uh, especially in It's Quiet Uptown. She's like hardly in it at all because that's not really her song, but she has the point like right when they're getting ready to talk about forgiveness where she was just getting so choked up about the two of them being together in the garden and I was like, my babies. Some other highlights, I loved Mariah. Peggy, Mariah, whoever, I can't remember exactly the actress's name, but when she did say, say no to this, when she did say no to this, I was just, it was so good. Like, she hit some great high notes, and that high note that Mariah is supposed to hit, she hit it real well, and I was like, yes. Mmm. George Washington was really good. I loved how they kept the height difference between Hamilton and Washington. Like, this Washington was so tall, but he just did a great, great job, and I'm absolutely stunned because Chris Jackson is great. So the fact that they could get somebody to compare to him, I was just like, yay! Also, one last time, literally in tears because of the whole time I was like in like three weeks we're going to inauguration and I'm not prepared so I was basically just like the Obamas are going home but it was really good he hit some really great high notes too Washington just had like so much power and so I loved whoever they cast for him I can't remember his name I'm a horrible fan I'm sorry there were a couple other people here and there that were like oh like you're pretty good but like the other ones were just so so like Eliza let's talk about it so Eliza was on American Idol years ago and I just did not like her. She was very smiley, which isn't bad, but she also, she had a couple cracky notes where I was like, ooh, you could have done that better. I really missed Pippa a lot. And the thing is they have very similar voices. Like the Eliza part, it has a very weird range. And so I was kind of sympathetic for her, um, but like she just didn't hit any of the high notes that I wanted her to hit. And so I was really sad about that. She did a really good job at Burn. Burn was great, but Helpless was a little bit questionable. And additionally, when Philip was dying, she was supposed to have this, like, when Pippa did it, she had this really loud, like, gut-wrenching scream of, like, I just lost my son. And uh, this Eliza, she still had emotion, but, like, she kind of muffled her scream, and it wasn't really a scream, it was more like a sob. Which, you know, artistic direction, and that's fine, whatever. But I personally enjoyed the scream better, so that was a little unfortunate. Additionally, I did not like Philip. The thing about Philip is, Philip was very similar to Anthony Ramos in a lot of ways, and I'm sorry I keep comparing them, but that's what I'm gonna do. Um, very, very similar. Like, they definitely looked similar, like their hair was similar, they had a very similar vocal quality, um, so the tone was very similar, but I just, 
Oh, I don't know what it was. He just really annoyed me the whole time. Like anytime he was on stage, I just did not enjoy it. And I, I think that's more just personal preference that I didn't like him. I think he hit the notes okay. I just was not a huge fan of him. I'm obviously leaving out the main person who is Hamilton, Miguel. Hamilton is a big part and it's very tough shoes to fill because when I saw it, I saw the original guy. Like I saw Lynn. So if you don't do it right, I'm gonna be like, um, Lynn did it way better. And I didn't dislike him like I think he did a very good job with uh the part he was given however um I think he fell a little bit flat for me just because he didn't put the same like emotion and power that Lynn put into it which is understandable I did really like his vocal quality like he sang better than Lynn just because you know I, you just felt more when Lynn was going like you could feel the emotion you could feel him in in it and like Miguel was great but I felt like he wasn't giving it his all or like he didn't connect well with me and my mom kind of felt the same way she thought he was a little bit flat um especially <laughs> during meet me inside washington and hamilton you know are having their little face up, up for, having their little face off face off on stage and so they keep going back and forth and he's like don't call me son don't call me son and then he has the call me son one more time and like miguel like said the line but you it didn't really feel that powerful at all he was just kind of saying it so that was a little off-putting but he did like a fine job his singing of hurricane was great even if it didn't have the same emotion like he definitely sang it really really well so i was really proud of him when he did that but like literally just the whole time that was the main one where i was like oh but remember lynn so i think the main difference between chicago and new york other than the fact that I was comparing the two of them like constantly, which is my problem, that's fine. Um, I think one of the main differences that I noticed was everybody was trying to make the characters their own. And in New York, they kind of already had that. They had made them their own. They didn't have to like work off of anybody else except for Rory. And Rory did a great job. Oh, the king. The king did a great job too. I can't remember his name. He did a, an amazing job job even though like the king always annoys me because I'm like you're a white guy he like put all this like I don't know like frilly quality on all of his words so that he sounded very 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 what am I trying to say here I don't know he sounded very English and it was really really good and he emoted very very well and he was so so good like I think the kings that I've seen have both been phenomenal even though they weren't Jonathan Groff and it's, a, it's an easy part, I feel like, to make your own because you just have to be like really dramatic. Um, and the other ones, everybody else did a great job too of making the characters into these new characters that are not the original cast. Especially Aaron Burr and Jefferson. They turn them into people, they're very similar to their original, but they're just different enough in their tonation and like the little improvs that everybody does. They're all just slightly different enough that you can be like, oh, I can tell that you're not the original and I still like you. I think another big thing that I noticed this time around, because it was the second time that I'd seen the choreography, was that I could spend more time worried about the ensemble and the people around the main actors. Um, there are a couple, there are actually a lot of scenes where it's just like, one or two people who are like the only people on stage singing and you kind of just have to focus on them and there's no ensemble members to focus on like wait for it is one of those um dear theodosia that would be enough um some of those like smaller numbers where it's just one or two people like you can you don't have much else to focus on but them but then there are some other numbers like hurricane especially i spent the whole time not looking at hamilton i was just like looking around the circle at everybody else and it was really great it was really cool to see how they set everything up and i was trying to pay more attention during helpless and satisfied to see how they were recreating it because especially after reading hamilton um and seeing the explanation for all the sets it was really cool to go back and see this is how they set up for this this is how this works and I watched the bullet being like oh I know it's a bullet this time and I was very focused on that. One of the main things I noticed about the bullet is there is a scene I believe it's stay alive? No yeah I think it's stay alive and so Hamilton starts out on stage and he is sitting in a chair writing and right before the music starts the bullet like shoots right by him and so he's like this and the bullet girl comes behind and like just barely misses him and it was such an, a small thing but like noticing it I was like look so close and yet he'll only get shot later like it was just a really cool thing to see it all tied together and like even though the choreography was all the same I think my mom and I noticed that there were less ensemble members for Chicago which was kind of interesting I think it's because the stage is smaller there were just like little tiny differences here and there but for the most part it was it was like it was the same show and like I would highly recommend it to anybody 
if you haven't seen New York and you're like, I don't want to spend that much, like definitely go to Chicago because they did a phenomenal job with what the huge thing that they were given. Honestly, like I think my favorite part was Room Where It Happens just because it was so good. I definitely cried during Who Lives, Who Dies, Who Tells Your Story, um, like the orphanage, that one got me this time. I cried one last time because I was thinking about the Obamas. The thing is, because I've seen both of them, I noticed how different it was. And I think it's different if you only go and see Chicago because you're gonna enjoy it a whole lot more. Like, I enjoyed it a lot, but going into it, I wasn't as like, yes, Hamilton. I was like, yeah, cool, I get to see Hamilton again. I'm so blessed, like, I'm so excited. It was not at all the same as the feeling I had when I went to New York City. Like, I was freaking pumped. I, like, cried when the whole thing started, like, within five seconds of the first notes. And this time I was like, look, it's starting. I don't have to cry this time. But like the, the benefit of seeing it twice is that I did get to experience it two times. I know the show better than I did the first time. I got to see new people perform it, which was really exciting this time because usually when I see it in Chicago, I have to spend the whole time being like, what if I had seen the original cast though? What would that look like? Like now I could appreciate them as their own people because I had seen the original cast and I could say that's great but I want to see these new people do a good job. And so I like simultaneously think I enjoyed it more and enjoyed it less because I had seen it in New York. So it's a hard line to balance but um, I'm very 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 happy that I got to go see it. My mom and I keep talking and the first time we saw it we were in the last row in New York. This time we were still on the balcony but we were like at least like 20 seats further towards the stage and we got to see their faces a lot better this time but she was like the next time we go see it we're gonna get orchestra seats and I was like okay mom well we don't have to go to San Francisco because we've already seen Rory and Joshua Henry she's like okay London we're gonna be London I was like okay mom sure so yeah I've seen Hamilton twice now it was so so good um if you have specific questions about this cast you can definitely comment down below but please try and go watch the New York long one first because that will explain all of the staging better than I can. This one, I wasn't as focused on remembering everything and more about, you know, feeling it and like seeing how these new people did it. 10 out of 10, would recommend. You should definitely go see it if you have the chance. Yeah, awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you get to see Hamilton at some point, either in Chicago or London or New York or wherever. Like, you should definitely see it at some point because it's awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.